And so then we started Dang. meeting kids from like Sacramento or, or kids from Fairfield or kids from even Atascadero, the town yeah. I live in. They're, they're, these you kids just... used to drive out <clears throat> for every show. And then, you know, you start talking and then, you know, you, you just expand it from there. It's like, you know, it's just the internet before the internet, really. But a lot, Pen Pal, too. There's a lot of yeah. writing people. There was like, and then if you had Ross a band. really good at yeah. that, Use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code HEAVY at checkout and get 15% off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. Honored to have the whole band exhumed here. Thank you for for being here. I know your schedule is pretty chaotic right now. You're out. You're out for five weeks. Yeah, we're we're wrapping up five weeks, but this actually worked out perfect, man. So this is uh, actually kind of a nice way to chill for you know a little bit. Yeah, so thanks, thanks for having, having us here. Yeah, yeah, thank dude, you thank for you having us. Oh, thank. It's good to be here. Thank thank you guys. I know like your your tour is five weeks, and I know after like start losing my mind after three and a half weeks. <laughs> You yeah. know, you're like, oh, uh, mine was gone before I even left. Oh so. my goodness. <laughs> well, there's a fine line. Like, the first week you're super excited. Second week you're getting in your flow. Third week you're like, okay, I'm starting to feel a little of the effects. Four, week yeah. four, you're like, okay, I'm just tired. Week day. four, you're yelling yeah. at each other and, and there's lots of hugs. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And by, yeah, it's little, yeah. So that's the therapy week where, yeah. you know, you have the, It's good. And then you build stronger bonds for the future. Right. Well, so the, you can have more explosive arguments. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think the thing that was kind of smart about uh, the way that the tour was routed is that the end is the warm part mm-hmm. so at the beginning it was it was it was okay for the first few days and it got super cold and then everybody got sick oh, everybody no. was miserable for like 2 weeks and cranky and then all of a sudden <clears throat> the temperature rose above 40 degrees yeah and then all of a sudden people started laughing and having a nice well, time. we started in portland and it was a little chilly and yeah. then we just did the whole Top part of the country. It wasn't it actually warm like until the 11. first. Like surprisingly, <laughs> Cleveland was the warmest day. In the, the yeah, first, right. it was like fifty-four degrees. We're like, oh shit, I'm putting the shorts on now. <laughs> <laughs> Came through, dog. <laughs> wow. Well, so, oh my goodness. Uh, can we do a quick intro? Sure. sure. Yeah. Oh, Ross. Oh, <laughs> I need you to say uh, I'm uh, Ross Sewage. I play the bass. <laughs> Pass it up. I, I, from exam. There's another thing that what? you do too. Oh, I also uh, talk into a microphone. <laughs> it usually sounds kind of gurgly, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's how I describe it. That's how it's on the liner notes. Uh-huh. Talking into a microphone sometimes kind of gurgly. Toilet bowl voice. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's just <laughs> toilet <Stuck> sound. <laughs> uh, I'm Matt. I uh, do guitar and vocals in the band. Yeah. Hey, I'm Sebastian. I play guitar and sometimes reinforce the choruses. Vocally, yeah, vocally, yeah, nice. And Mike Hamilton, drums. I'm just guy that sits in the back. I'm the lazy guy that sits on my ass and just does this. <laughs> he gets to look at our butts yeah. every show. He's Where's the luckiest the guy in the world. Yeah, no, I just look at my drums. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you could call a death metal drummer lazy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Probably. Just, I get to chill. Would Would that be the hardest job? Oh, definitely. I don't know. Um, it's physical. 100%. It's pretty physical, but these guys are out there running around and you know yeah, head, I, head banging, which I don't do. Which I'm glad I don't have to. But <laughs> I'm just pretending yeah. I'm an LA Guns. I know? mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's diminishing returns. I, I dance around a lot, but I went to play like two strings. I had the luxury of sitting at like <laughs> one yeah. spot to do everything I do, but to have these guys running around playing and singing and entertaining. That's I think that's that's a lot of work itself. Yeah. So that's for me. I'm just kind of chill back there in my element. It's like. It's like an office job. Sometimes <laughs> just typing. TV, just TBS typing reports, away. blast beats. It's almost the same. <laughs> totally. You know, Dr. Much, Filthy yeah. has the hardest some job. Eighth, some sixteenth, some quarter notes. Dr. Filthy has the hardest job. He has to see to our health care needs every day. Right. Yeah. He has yeah. to bring us drinks on stage. Body massages, foot rubs. He does do the worm every night. He does the worm every <laughs> night. He does some break dancing. Dr. Filthy, our, our, our uh, uh, what, mascot. Mascot, yeah. Yeah, he's our mascot. Sick. Well, uh, yeah, I think we all have uh, our body. We all have different damaged body parts, <laughs> right? Yeah. I guess that might make the most sense. Yeah, yeah right, definitely. for sure. What hurts most on this tour, Mike? My, bra- <laughs> my brain. <laughs> I'm still Dude, the right. words right out of my mouth. Dude, no? that's the hardest, man. Like trying to keep like uh, mental clarity out there. Trying to keep like your yourself intact out there is definitely has been my shocking like. 
uh, thoughts. I'm like, I, how do I, I don't know a way to keep m my thoughts and brain healthy out there yeah. yet. It's, it's tough. It's just, it's hard. <clears throat> I just always try to remind myself that I wouldn't want to do anything else and I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And I think that ultimately, it keeps me going personally. You know, there's nothing I'd rather do. So when I feel like, ah, this shit sucks, like I don't want to be here <laughs> yeah. right now, I just want to go home. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I get to do this. This yeah. is pretty fucking sick, you know? Yeah, we, we have a crazy life. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, it's nuts. I like to make the band stop at toy stores so I can regress to a childlike state and buy G.I. <laughs> Joe's. Yeah. True. So that works for me. Yeah, I think everybody has to find like their own way. I mean, I you know, uh, my thing is I just try to like let go of as much stuff as I possibly can. It's like that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Because then if I start thinking about all that, I'll get really uptight and pissed off or whatever. So it's just sort of a, mm. you know, like I said. But everybody has their own sort of thing. And I also go to the toy stores with Ross. So yeah, that helps too. You got to take yeah. time for self care. Some you distract. Just gotta, yeah. Sometimes just take a walk. Just get away from the venue. Go just yeah. just stroll or do something like that. Yeah. The other day, Ross and I. Went with our merch girl to go get pedicures. Yeah, got pedicures. pedicures? Uh, yeah, my first Hell time. Yeah. It's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, his first time. Mine, not. Yeah, you get a nice hot stone rub on your feet and get calluses ripped off and it's just like you know some self care is very important. Yeah. What's a what's a stone rub? Oh, they get the hot stones out and they like you know go against like your calf muscle and on the and the bottom of your feet and it oh, just wow. feels absolutely wonderful because you're you're you're. you're Either sitting or you're jumping around on stage, and yeah, your feet can. Uh, yeah, start, so especially you have taking them on tour. Impact. Well, just being stupid musician types, you get stupid calluses, and you're disgusting, and you don't shower enough, and then yeah, go baby yourself a little bit. I it feels that. good. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> Gotta go hit up. You, you got in the spa this morning. Yeah, you get in the hot tub. Relax in the hot tub. Right. We finally found a working one in this entire country. <clears throat> go find a massage parlor. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, living it up. I mean, you know, sixty bucks is sixty bucks. Got to take care of yourself. Right? Yes, I'm in the wrong band. <laughs> well, we get, you know, you get older. You got to take care of those those things and try to like, you know, the aching back. It's gonna hurt, but if you yeah. take care of say your feet, you have some good shoes on, it's and huge. try to get all the relaxing times in that you can in a crazy hectic schedule. Yeah, yeah. So, well, as you know, the hardest part is getting like decent good sleep, the yeah. sleep, oh, yeah. and, and also eating healthy foods. That's like you know, I'm just a god. You turn into a human garbage can. You just throw whatever's available at the moment yeah. just to eat it and just like, all right. Just cool. whatever roller shit is from the loves. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. the bean and cheese tacos. Yeah. Just the mysterious, you know, rolling <laughs> just, things yeah. on the hot fucking pens. You're like, uh. I don't get three of those. It's a glamorous, it's a glamorous meat, lifestyle. <laughs> four food groups, meat, pizza, mac and cheese, and bean burritos. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. And beer. And beer. That's and five. Always beer. Yeah. That's, that's at the top. top. We had, we had to rework the, the pyramid. pyramid. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 stop, stop yeah, actually, it's the bottom because you need the most beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it goes up from there. That's where you yeah. get all your carbs from. Right. That's the foundation to Carb. a career. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> career and longevity in metal. There yeah. is, you, got, you, got, you, got, you got the pyramid, right? Absolutely. Okay, wow. So you put the mental health at the, the lowest, right? Right. Okay, right. And, yeah. then, oh, and then and sleep's right above that. It's sad but true. It is. It's fucking nuts, dude. And you know... But um, we, we sign up for it like two or three times a year and, and we get out there. We love it. We love it. You know, it's the payoff is just having the fans show up and fucking rock out with you. That's ultimately that's what we do it for is just for create music and just mm -hmm. play live. I'm telling you, I do it for the toy stores. Toy <laughs> stores. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do is to get out to toy stores across America. But you can it's sit at home good. and just be on Amazon the whole time. Yeah, but that's, that's not fun. Yeah, fun. Yeah, just that's pack not you in fun. a van. You know? it's the, yeah. yeah, when you find it in the wild, you're just like, yes. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> literally, though, on tours, I try to find time to go do stupid things in every town, like fun things. Like uh, in Tulsa, has the center of the universe where you go clap and it sounds like it's it's just. You got to entertain yourself through it all. You do, and go find like little tourist spots and find those and get to those spots when you can. Because I mean, you're out there traveling. I just don't really. See, I mean, it's great to play the show, but I don't necessarily want to sit around a venue all day. It's like, no, you got you got to walk. You got to get out, walk around, yeah. see some stuff. Like yeah. the biggest ball you have this in Minnesota. Unique <laughs> opportunity to yeah. like be travel in places that other people wouldn't necessarily get to go. I've seen yeah. so many damn things over my life. It's amazing. I know. You guys have seen so much, and you guys literally, I mean, you were just talking about, like, it's crazy how the fans are still at the shows. I mean, after, I mean, Zoom's <laughs> been in a band for, like, 32 years, right, Matt? 
Something like that. Yeah, it sounds depressing when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the first record came out uh, 24 years ago, which is just kind of shocking to contemplate. Three, yeah. three more years and the 401k kicks in, right? right? That's yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm going to stick around until the 401k gets vested and then I'll it's see out. the suckers later. No, it, dude, I mean, that's really inspiring to me because uh, I've been in Suicide Silence for 20 years. That's awesome. And it, 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 it doesn't feel like 20 years. It's like, you know, and you kind of like, oh, we have... Is like looking at bands like you guys or like someone that's been doing it longer than me and how long they can sustain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I look at bands like you guys, you well, know, so it's, it's we do the badass. same thing, you know. I mean, like, um, I know having toured with Obituary a bunch and, and talked to, uh, you know, John and, and Donald and just kind of looking at the way that they would try to, like, you know, situate the band, uh, you know, not necessarily musically, but just in terms of, like, figuring out how is this really going to work. Um, yeah. You know, I feel like I've personally learned a lot from them, and, like, um, you know, we, we look at, like, Campbell, you know, and the, the way that they're sort of <laughs> this almost, like, rigid schedule of productivity, and I think that that kind of forces you to be more creative because you're like, hey, in two years we got to make a fucking record. So let's, you know, get on it and get out there and, you know, sort of <clears throat> make it be something that is sustainable or whatever. So, I mean, it's always, you know, everybody's just learning from everybody else and, and it's all trial and error. And it's one of the things that's awesome about the Internet age and the 21st century or whatever, that there's just so much more information <clears throat> available on how to fucking be in a band and make it actually... You know, more or less work. Well, Cannibal is pretty mm -hmm. much the blueprint, dude. Like oh, yeah. They're, they're, as far as productivity and as far as staying on schedule and just mm -hmm. their fucking schedule, man. Like, they're always on tour or writing a new record or recording a new record. It's like and, the, never and the new record stop. is always good. They're I mean, always that's, putting you know, out that, that's killer a, music. That's, that's a real, that's like, charge. How do you do that, you think, guys? What's that? How do you write just always good music? Oh, don't we don't? I, <laughs> you're asking the wrong band. <laughs> so I don't know either. What the fuck? It, it, <laughs> it starts with just still having that fire and that passion for what you do, man. Yeah. If you're still passionate about it, then you know it shows in the music that you write. I, I think it's mm -hmm. just about like you just got to be honest, you know. And it's like when you try to, <clears throat> you, you got to be stoked on what you're doing, and you got to sort of just come from the same perspective, and and you kind of keep whatever it was that made you want to start doing this, like. You, you got to keep that, and then sort of as long as you're expanding out directly from there, then it probably won't suck, you know. And the other thing is that you got to be able to like. In this band, we're pretty open with each other. You know, if something's not working or isn't good or whatever, it's like you just be like, "This is I don't like this part. Like, do something else." You're like, all right, cool. Instead of like, no, this is my spiritual essence in this of course, one combination yeah. of notes, of and you're <laughs> destroying me. It's just like, oh shit, right, you, this riff sucks. All right, cool, just, throw it away. I think it also know. helps you just like being curious people, still listening to new music, yeah, right. having wanted to have new experiences instead of getting into like a muddled uh, way of thinking. Like, oh, everything was only good back then when I was in high school, and everything <clears> sucks <throat> now. And it's like, I mean, you're still going to be doing the same. Th Thing, like basic the same thing, but it's not going to get as stale because we right. are trying to you know it's 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 always exhumed, but we still have a passion for making stuff and seeing other people make stuff. Like staying true to yourself, keeping your formula yeah. the same, but trying just, new elements yeah, on every just, record just to kind yeah. of have a fresh kind of appeal. Even, even if you're staying mm -hmm. kind of stagnant within your realm, at least you still have the creative fire to want to do that yeah. and to have fun and appreciate the things and just hang out with some people you actually like playing music with which is always uh... oh you like playing music with us <laughs> wow yeah. oh my goodness <laughs> lot, 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 of over here. <laughs> lot of love there man yeah, I mean, that's i mean that's why I, I mean i just met matt in high school and i didn't even play it anything and i just wanted to hang out with my friends so i was like well i guess i better learn how to play an instrument because they keep doing that all the time wow. and i'm just sitting around so <laughs> so yeah i was still just playing with friends for over like 20 plus years and that's uh i think that's a key element is to keep that kind of friendship going 
yeah. and talk things out when you get frustrated and have yeah. good times and laughs and if you don't like the guys in the band that you're playing with like why are you in that band it's yeah. like, I mean unless your band makes situation. like a shitload of money well then that's <laughs> like, yeah, I mean if I was well, making that's not like, us right. 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 no no that's true. We, that's I'm not, not there us. yet yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you made like, like $250,000 a year like okay sure. you can put up with some shit no that's like some of the dopest shit on tour we got the we could like Rented out a house and hung out with another band yeah. on the tour and grilled and drank and played Trivial Pursuit and just yeah. Yeah. bullshitted. So that was <coughs> that was like a great night on tour. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's great. You guys are like it seems you're your friends first. I think right? so. for yeah. me, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're just, I you're, think that's how we always kind of looked at it when we were kids, which did not necessarily lead to the best like personnel decisions oh, <laughs> necessarily really? we're like you know there would be like a, a kid you know this is back when i was like in high school a kid that was like good at drums but i was like this kid's an idiot like i can fucking imagine hanging out with this guy he's a fucking moron <laughs> or you know there's a guy that was like really good at guitar but he was like i don't know man terrorizer that's just a bunch of bullshit noise like i don't want to fucking jam with that guy them's fighting words <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know but in you know in high school it was uh it's a lot of lines drawn in the sand. It was really just about trying to find people that were like-minded um, and people that you'd want to spend time with because, you know, if the band, if your project becomes successful, like, you're going to be uh, not, like, in, in a small, you know, <laughs> lowercase successful. Um, yeah, you're, you're spending time with these people forever. It's cool the way it worked <laughs> out, like, you know, me joining the band and shit because we were friends. I on a tour with these guys before but not playing with them it's like with my other band noise them I you can say, say the band they're very good shout out shout out plug it in no, no, no shameless self plug for me but um uh, yeah just like you know hanging out with these guys and you know having them come stay at my house and just jamming with them one night like it was just organic that when well, I got the phone call I was like oh yeah I'll come on tour with you guys like, what do you need like merch guy driver guitar tech like, wow we, we want you to play Damn, that's sick. What? <laughs> Me? You think we can shit. afford a guitar tech? <laughs> You're wild. <laughs> hey. Did you know when, when you saw the name on, on your phone? Oh, wait, they're probably going to call me for it. <laughs> no. I you didn't had no know. idea. I thought it was like maybe they were coming to town and they needed a place to stay again. So I was like, yeah, what's up, dude? Like, uh, hey, like, uh, what's they, the rest of your year looking like? And I'm like, well. To be fair, also needed a place to stay. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, all good. Come by the hot box. <laughs> Oh my goodness! So, uh, so Matt, you went to to high school with Ross? Uh, no, but we were very. Was, uh, I went to high school with Colt Jones, Colt, the original right. drummer yeah. from. And he said, "Hey, you're a like minded dork. Come over and play TSR Marvel superheroes role playing with my friend, and <laughs> nice. I think you'll have a good time." And then when I met Ross, I was like, "Oh, this is the kid that shops at the comic book store where I work at." I was like, "I I think I know this guy." And then. Uh, yeah, and it was it was really kind of dumb because the high school Ross and Cole went to was like a quarter mile from my house, and I took the bus really? to this other school across town, which was silly. But anyway, um, but yeah, it was like so. Me and Cole, uh, I started just hanging around with those guys, and I was into some like getting into some metal and stuff. Were you like there. a sophomore? Uh, yeah, I, I was a junior, and right? I started. I was like getting into some metal and listening to some stuff, and then like there's like here, check out Carcass. <laughs> Just skip all that formative stuff. We've already done the hard work for you. We've oh, already wow. gone through all these other mid bands. Here's Carcass. Here's Godflesh. Here's Napalm Death, and uh, and here's Voivod. And so I was just like, how do you process that? Um, <laughs> how do I process? Well, I mean, I just jumped right to death metal, and then I. I had to go back and relearn some old thrash and heavy metal stuff that I come to love later. Yeah. So, but yeah, I got, I got a, a boosted up a grade. <laughs> I, never, I never heard of that. Someone just kind of skipping the whole like, yeah. oh, like, like, like the gateway bands. Yeah, yeah. That, I can't imagine. It was great. I, I, it saved me a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to go. I didn't have to like learn about <clears throat> funk thrash right then and like go through all oh, yeah. that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. It was like, no, here, Matt's just favorite. go to the heavy yeah. Wait, <laughs> wait, so no infectious grooves? Come no, on. no, skip right past that. It was great. <laughs> That's funny. Oh shit. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Cole is uh, so. So Matt, when did, how did you and Cole meet? Because it, who, what did, did did you found the band or or, or was it like a co-found? Um. Well, Cole and I met on the school bus in like seventh grade. The I school think. bus. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's sick as fuck. Yeah, I. 
Charming. I was going to uh, uh, like a. I had a scholarship to this private school, and uh, I lost the scholarship because it was a disciplinary problem. <laughs> of course. And Go uh, my parents were just like my mom was a nurse, and my dad was like uh, assistant manager at a grocery store, so they could not afford the tuition. So I went to public school, and I didn't know anybody. And Cole had just moved to California from Utah, and so he hmm. also didn't know anybody. And I was just kind of getting into metal, and we were both kind of into, like, you know, D&D comics and stuff like that. And so at first I was like, oh, this kid's kind of a dork or whatever. And then uh, by, like, eighth grade we started becoming, like, really good friends. And I was sort of, you know, being like, dude, check this tape out, check this tape out, check this. You know, like, have you heard Venom? Have you heard Celtic Frost? Have you heard Voivod? Have you heard Creator? Have you heard Sodom? Have you heard Scream Bloody Gore? Like, you know. And um, then we just had a, kind of a group of friends, and we always talked about our, our band and, oh, we're going to be in a band, we're going to do this, and it's going to be blah, 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 blah. And eventually people started, you know, picking up instruments or whatever, and Cole was, like, the only one that didn't have an instrument. And we're like, well, we have a friend that plays bass, I play guitar, we have another friend that plays guitar, we decided our other random friend is going to be the singer, so I guess you have to get a drum kit. <laughs> and then uh, okay. he had a saxophone from like a school band or whatever, so he sold that and then bought a drum set, and uh, yeah, this is all in like 90, 91 or whatever, we were like, you know, 14, 15 or whatever, and then we just started just making a bunch of noise in my dad's garage, and then... As things sort of developed, some some of the kids left, and then other kids came in, and then by like ninety one, I think we played our first show in October, right after my sixteenth birthday in October ninety one. Wow, so that's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it is kind of wild, like thinking back on it. I mean, I don't know, it just seemed normal or whatever, but yeah. <clears throat> just like fourteen year old kid, like, all right, you ever heard crepitating bowel erosion? <laughs> it was a good one. <laughs> How did you find bands back then? Uh. Like, f for me, um, I was a little bit different than a lot of kids in that I didn't have, like, an older brother or a cousin or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I came from, like, the comic book world. Like, that's, that was my shit before I got into metal. And there's a lot of sort of research involved in that. Like, you'd be reading an issue, and it would be like, who's this guy? And there'd be a note that'd be like, if you saw Invincible Iron Man number 231, you saw that he escaped from the ice he was frozen or whatever, and then you'd get, mm -hmm. like, go back and get it. And so I would read all these magazines, and I'd be like, what is this band that's getting, like, one sense of mention? Or what is this guy's T-shirt or whatever? Yeah, I remember that was a big one was like, oh, he's wearing that, what's that sick-looking T-shirt yeah. that, yep. like, you know, so-and-so is wearing? Yeah. And it's like, I'm going to go look up for that band somewhere at the and record then you'd, store. Or, oh, the right. mail order. A lot of it was mail order catalogs and just going through, well, that name sounds cool. I'm going to go ahead and buy that. <laughs> there was a certain period where there was a lot of record labels. You could just be like, well, okay, they just put out a new record. I've never even heard of this band, but... Yeah, it, like you could just buy the record and know it was at least going to be decent. A lot of it was through just the magazines too, and then you yeah. get the, you get the like tape the and you open the tape up, and then the you know the, the J card was basically the order form for all the bands that were on that label. Or you oh, like thanks yeah. list yeah. of the bands. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. 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 thanks some list. cool sounding band. I'm going to go check that I, out. I literally had like a notebook, and I would just write down band names that I'd heard of, and I was like, or seen okay, in a thanks list. I got to try and remember these, and like you know if I can I mean, find it, them. And it, I think we took like road trips down to L.A. to go to like Wild Rags Records, and we're just like, all right, pick out. Anything with a cool cover, so I mean, just like never heard it, like because that was a like one of the few places that would really have like lots of cool underground music hmm. anywhere. Yeah. So we'd have to. It was like you could at first. It was like if it was on earache, you could buy it. Absolutely, it was, it was like, like without fail. The first like twenty five earache releases, like you knew that they were going to be like extreme or heavy or whatever. Combat was like that too. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, it started with the thrash days first. Yeah, there was combat, there was noise, right. Metal Blade sometimes, and then it was like Earache, Roadrunner, and then like Seraphic Decay, like, because they put out like the Mortician demo and like, the Morbid Angel demo, Bootleg 7-inch, and the Gorephobia 7-inch, and the Abhorrence, like the pre-amorphous like death metal band or whatever. And it, you just kind of... I don't know, and then uh, everybody bought a little bit, and then everybody taped everything for everybody. Yeah. Like, as soon as you got an album, you're, like, making a tape to, like, give to your Copy friends. Copy and tape. And, yeah, wow. absolutely. That's you know? sick. And um, that's what we would do. You know, we were, like, just well, dorks tape. that couldn't get laid, so we'd just sit around <laughs> after school, like, on the weekends, and just, like, have you heard this? Have you heard this? Oh, shit, this band's heavier than that band. Have you heard this? Yeah. And um, it was, like, sick. a... Yeah, it was so just, eventually just going to shows and meeting other people finally. Sure. Like, once you got yeah. old enough to get in. <laughs>
Yeah, it was yeah. like 90. Um, I remember the big one for me in 90 was the Death Pestilence Carcass Tour. And I remember Whoa. The, the, it was like a week before my 15th birthday. And I, I told my parents, I'm like, I don't want a birthday present. I just want you to let me go to the show that's on a Thursday night. I promise I'll go to school the next day. I'm not going to cut school. Just let me go. And that was sort of the first, you know, because in our group of friends, there was like Cole and I. This is before Ross. Um, there was Cole and I. We were always like, guys, I like creators. I like creator too. But like, you got to hear, you know, Carcass. You got to hear Extreme Noise here. You got to hear Napalm Death. Like, this is like way heavier. It's more extreme. And we went to that show, and our friends were like, oh, this is what you guys keep talking about. It's like, yeah, dude, this is way more intense. And then from there, we started meeting other kids, you know, and we were like kids, we we're children. <laughs> I wasn't even yeah. 15 yet. And so then we started Dang. meeting kids from like Sacramento or, or kids from Fairfield or kids from even Atascadero, the town yeah. I live in. They're, they're, these kids used to drive out <clears throat> for every show. And then, you know, you start talking, and then. You know, you just expand it from there. It was like, you know, it's just the internet before the internet, really. But a lot, pen pal, too. There's a lot of yeah. writing people. There was like, and then if you had Ross a band. Ross was really good at writing. Yeah, that, yeah but once I was in the group, and then I started, they, they were kind of like, I get not doing as much mail and stuff. And I was like, well, we I've been lazy. trading tapes and doing this stuff with other people. And so there was yeah. a lot of tape trades. And we'd be sending out demos everywhere. In his zine, I found a, because people would pack the envelopes with flyers as a little, like, I guess as a little time document about what it was like back then. <laughs> but yeah, you sent mail around and like, you'd f meet a guy who like wanted to trade tapes and like, I'll send you this and it, flyers at shows and stuff like that. And then you'd like, send all those flyers in the mail. You'd get other flyers. You'd, Look at these bands, and it's like, okay, well, that looks really gross. I'm going to order that tape. That's what <laughs> right? I'm I can't read this logo. Let's buy it. Yeah, it looks like it, <laughs> it's sharp, and it looks like it would hurt. I'm right. definitely getting this band. And yeah, so that's, I mean, that's just how we kind of communicated then. And that's like, and you we, would just hand your demos out at, at shows. You just oh, burn cool. your own tapes and be like, here, here's my band. Was, Check them out. Here's my band. Check them out. And flyers and all that. Holy and that like, the, well, the first, like, I think the first, uh, the split CD we did with Hemdale, which I guess is of some note now, but we literally. We're going to Cannibal Corp shows and just handing out free CDs and yeah. people were like refusing them. <laughs> they wanted no part of that. They were like, what the fuck? I don't know who the fucking guys are, but like, yeah. just kind of wish we'd held on to them for yeah. eBay. But now. the tape trading Oops. days, that was, a, like, that was when everybody that was, what was we did. busting Thanks, their man. ass to try yeah. to you know, get exposure for your band. It's like, Pass out. You go to like Kinko's and make your own J cards and your own flyers. Cheryl, Kinko's. Copy lady. Cheryl the copy lady at Kinko's. <laughs> she loved us. We'd come in at like midnight. And she'd get us get all the free copies because we were talking to her yeah. and kept her awake. Yep. I'm pretty sure she <laughs> was on the copy several, lady. several pills. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she was definitely on man. Yeah. So, but yeah, we was like, <laughs> but yeah, she was a nice lady. The wacky world. Cut oh, demo yeah. covers. Yeah. And now you can uh, just make a band camp and it's. I don't want to say that's like any of less of an experience. I'm, I'm, I think it's awesome that people can do stuff like that now and just have a mm -hmm. band camp and send it out. And thank God you don't have to stay up like and ruin all your Saturday <laughs> nights yeah. fucking sending out demo tapes. Like it's great. But I mean, the I'm cool so thing happy. about that time period was not only were we like playing music that was kind of new, not new, but just something that was different. But you're also you were your promoted your own band, and so how hard you work depends on how successful you want to be. It's like getting getting on the show straight up. Yeah. And, you know, the more you worked and promoted your band, like California Concerts, I think, was yeah. the one. That they would see your name and be like, oh, this band's kind of rising. Was, they did like a pay-to-play kind of deal where they give you tickets to sell. And you'd play yeah, they were like, like, this, this band will work hard. Like a They'll Tuesday sell their, or, our tickets yeah, for or us. Or Wednesday right? or like a Thursday night. You didn't care. You would just like, give the tickets away just so your friends would show up just so that you could they, continue to play shows. And they'd put you on bills with, you know, national acts. And then that just keeps bumping your status up and you're getting your name more recognized. So That's kind of what we did all through high school. Yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, there, there was this... Yeah, California Concerts, they owned like three venues that did the overwhelming majority of the underground metal shows. And um, they really liked us because we were these like squeaky clean kind of like nerdy kids. And we would always show up and we would always pay whatever it was, you know, 350 or 400 bucks to open for Morbid Angel or whatever the fuck. And we didn't like, we didn't cause trouble. We weren't like trying to be underage drinkers. We were just like, holy shit. You know, I'm 16 and like my band is opening for Autopsy and I get to watch Autopsy sound check. Like, this is dream come true. And they're like, Yeah, you can have all the Coca Cola you want. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was. Um, uh, that was me for many, many years on tour. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So it was a. Uh, 
you know, but it ended up, uh, unfortunately, all those clubs closed at the same time because they were all owned by the same people, and we'd kind of been in this closed system. So it was like right after I graduated high school, they all closed, and it was like, how do we get a show? We've only been playing the same three clubs for like two and a half years. Yeah. You had to meet a bunch of other people. <coughs> yeah. the West, legendary Wes Robbins and all these other people who are kind of, and they played some really yeah, fucked this up was shitty back places. In the, 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 the Stone and the, the, the dark Omni. days of death metal started yeah. coming in were like the early to what? mid '90s, and no, clubs were closing, and did the bands stopped cross coming through into like the punk house thing as well. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Then yeah. we started okay. playing punk houses and weird basements in San Francisco. Dude, yeah, that's like where bands can really thrive. Just, it's like the DIY community. Like, it's, yeah. I don't think it's you know much different than what we're doing. I mean, maybe like in terms of pay scale or whatever, but it's very similar, you know? It's it's really the exact same. It's just a question of scale, yeah. Because yeah. we used to play VFW halls and houses, living rooms, basements, just wherever. We used to... The pub that we... There was the, the library the, the scene library, that we were, like, exactly was spearheaded for a while. I found a basement library, and that's where, like... A library basement? Yeah, library basement. We'd rent it out. We'd have, like, play with, like, Spaz and... Uh, Sick. Did Immortal Fader? Oh, there was their band after Immortal uh, Fader played it there. It was No Less. And no Less. Dead Bodies and Everywhere and Nuth Crush. And yeah, they were all playing this like, <laughs> tiny little basement to like 30 kids that lived in and around Cupertino and San Jose. And that's what we... It kinda we started, just had to kind of build a thing. Yeah, it kind of started growing. And then in, until we... And, until we, we, we flew them. too close to the sun. <laughs> and then they trashed the place. Oh, no. And I was like, no. <laughs> the cops are like holding me up against the wall. Like, what have you done? I'm like, I can't control these people. <clears throat> so we... The library scene died. Yeah, well, <laughs> but then true. actual clubs started having us again, and uh, that was like I remember. I think it was like John Cobbett had us at like Luther's, Luther's Hammer, Hammer for the first time, yeah. and he was like, "Hey, here's 150 bucks." And I'm like, "Wait, that's how this works? You can you get money? You get money for playing music? You like this is you the don't first pay time. money to yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, That's a big deal. That was like, man. wow, <laughs> this is shit. I like this feeling. I want this to continue." <laughs> <laughs> Now look at us. Yeah, because it was the, Om mm -hmm. the Oakland Omni, the Stone, and the One Step Beyond. And the One Step Beyond, and those are the, the three clubs that all the death metal touring acts would come through. Yeah. Until, yeah, until, until 94. Yeah, and then, and then there was, there was the, Berkeley like the Berkeley Square, Square which kind of sucked. But you guys played the Gilman a lot, too, back in yeah, the day, Yeah, we, right? we played Gilman Street a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, although we got banned and then unbanned multiple times <laughs> yeah. because we had sex it's a very, lyrics. It's a very... Uh, uh, it's a punk, a very famous punk club yeah. in Berkeley. Like Green Day got their start and all that stuff. And, and then the and they have always have changing rules. I think they yeah. said. Uh, also, when uh, we got signed to Relapse, that was too major of we a label a major to label. let us play there. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Relapse was considered a major label, and this is like 1997. Oh. Right, <laughs> like, it was very not a major label. No. Um, but yeah, all those like little places that you kind of we really kind of you just had to kind of fight for your. Uh, places to play and figure things out in the those times in the 90s and then started opening it up again in the 2000s it was much nicer yeah actual places and actual metal nights at, at various small bars but it was a lot of fun and building a community there too and then you would like promote and book your own shows like you would promote Ross your own really band. did most of that yeah. work yeah. yeah I was always like I don't want to be involved in the business side and it was like an amazingly Throughout the years, it's like, wow, we don't have our shit together on <laughs> the business <laughs> side. Oh, and then dude, when we real. started the band again, whatever it was, that's 10 or 11 rank. years ago, yep. that started to finally change. Yeah, it was good. Like, I love not being part of the business side. Matt, Matt, yeah, Matt's same. a good papa. He takes care of us. <laughs> I try. I just get in the van and play guitar. That's Here fucking we go. sick. <laughs> Here we go. And that's after years of being like the guy on tour where like I did all the driving. I handled like, you know, settling up and, you know, advancing shows and shit. It's nice to just get in a van. And just, I I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. You, you guys talk about there is a dark time in death metal. What it was the, that was like the mid nineties. Yeah. What what like like, like what happened there? Uh, like to <laughs> to us personally, or like are you, uh, you, are you guys I mean, and I mean, maybe kind of, and the whole. I feel scene. like there was like a there was that. I feel, I, the, I feel like the beginning really marking point of that was like when Sony picked up all those bands. Uh, all the earache bands? All the earache bands. Sony picked up all these earache bands and then they put out albums that I thought were super awful and posery then, but now I've gone back and listened to them. I was like, wow. I was just like, oh shit, kid. I mean, Wolverine Blues is a great fucking record. It's fun. Well, it um, was but like, it, it like kind of took this turn. The, the, they thought Death Metal was going to be the next big thing and it really wasn't and all that shit kind of came crashing down and then... I think there was just also a move just in live music in general. So it wasn't just death metal. I think there was that, like, DJ started taking over clubs because, hey, we can only, we can pay one guy 
the same amount of people will show up and pay one guy to spin oh. records and instead we don't have to have live bands at this venue and I think it was MTV was going to go all electronica at that point too like around right. the Prodigy and so <clears throat> there was kind of that turn away from just like the standard rock and roll kind of uh, status quo going I mean, on there so it affected every kind of genre of music I think as a fan for me like I really felt like 93 there was like a big sort of sea change where the bands that I was most interested in as a death metal fan all sort of moved away from death metal, you know, and became more melodic or whatever. The death and roll. Yeah, it was like you had your Wolverine blues and your heartwork and your individual thought patterns and some of these kinds of things. And I think a lot of that probably came from label <laughs> influence because they weren't getting the numbers that they wanted as far as sales. And they're like, we need you to do this kind of sound. This is what's going to sell. They, mm. it, it, like, death metal they was were going to break. They were like, oh, if we go yeah. a little more rock and roll, you guys will be I know, like I know, the actual I know that's band. what Carcass thought. Yeah. And I know, Get on the radio. And I know Chuck was like, death metal is so confining and everybody's so derivative and it's all <laughs> blah, 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 and blast beats and I don't want to do that. And so I think it's a mix of commercial expectations and, you know, death metal, is, it's stylistically very limiting. So I kind of, in mm -hmm. hindsight, can't blame those bands for wanting to try something different. But it but does suck as a fan. Right? As a fan, like, mm -hmm. it was very... Yeah, kind of veered away from the core of what was they... hurtful, their, you know? Yeah, we're like, like your logo's was... block letters now. You, <laughs> right? <laughs> you Why have you me done this back? to me? Chuck, you changed the inverted cross to just a T and it broke me. I'll show you on the doll where it hurt me. <laughs> but it was because it was like something that, you know, uh, as much as I don't think we were a band that has ever taken ourselves seriously, like as a fan that back then I took really, really seriously. And that sort of became, but that was almost like it was good because that became like the impetus to sort of define like what was Exhum going to do. Because really, like the first couple demos and stuff, I don't really think we had much of an idea aside from like, we want to be a death metal band. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. We want to play fast. That was it. And then like 94, 95, when there wasn't a lot of like death metal that we were terribly interested in coming out and the scene was changing, that was kind of our time to sort of retreat and woodshed and be like, so like, what, like, what, what exactly are we doing? Like, what is our thing? And um, that's smart. Yeah. And then we started looking like, because black metal was really ascendant. And that's the other thing is that you don't really realize when you're 15, 16, 17, that scenes only last like five or six years. Mm -hmm. And then some bands continue and some bands fade away and whatever. And every scene, whether it's, you know, thrash or deathcore or fucking new romantic or whatever, like mm -hmm. there's like five or six years where it flourishes mm -hmm. and then it starts to get super big and then it kind of just dissipates and some bands mm -hmm. endure and some don't. But you don't have the the perspective when you're a kid deeply involved yeah. in the scene and you're living and dying for these records like oh my god and um <laughs> so we kind of took that time and and started kind of looking backwards and thinking about you know a lot of the the 80s metal and the 80s thrash and sort of how we could take that attitude and put it into the more like extreme shit that we were doing and that's kind of i think like when exhumed sort of became Exhumed, and not just like local band number three thousand two hundred and forty six or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, still sort of. You know, we've always been honest about being like a pretty like. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything, but we just sort of this is our take and this is what we're doing, and that's kind of like where it started, and then that ended up eventually, you know, working out fairly okay for us. You know. Yeah. And uh, you guys have your own sound. Obviously, you have your influences, but uh, sure. you you've developed. You know, it's it's your sound, you know, and uh, it sounds like during a dark time, uh, you just it seems a key. You just endure and then just think about <clears throat> who you are and where and where you yeah. want to go. And then at, at, at what point did uh, you guys start writing core metal? What at what at, at what point is that? Well, we did the split with Hemdale and then we did like a string of seven inches. And then I think we just kind of, I mean, it was just like, okay, we'll do the next thing. We got, they finally got signed by Relapse. So then I was like, oh, wow, we're going to actually make a record. And we're going to fight over a lot about the, what's going to go on that record. Yeah, I mean, because we a were... A bunch of, like, a contentious, uh, really uh, angry, or early <laughs> 20s years old, of course. Kids. So, like, yeah, it was, yeah. but it was like, yeah, it was... Um, I think, yeah, Cole and I were very adamant that we couldn't reuse any seven inch. Which songs. I thought was a terrible idea because I thought those were some of the better songs that we'd written. So we ended up using <laughs> songs that were older and not as good. But 
I mean, really, like... So, so yeah, so it, was, it wasn't, like, a focused writing period. There was some stuff that was, like, already on the table. As yeah. Far as, mm-hmm. it, like, yeah, I assume at that point it was just kind of writing all the time because okay. it was like, okay, well, there might be a 7-inch here. There might be a split CD here. Because that was, like, the only kind of shit that we were but also, getting into when we got signed. The, the Gore Metal existed as a concept before we signed a relapse because... Um, the label that did the Hemdale split, oh, Vis- yeah, Visceral right. Productions. We were going to Craig go had um, Craig, the drummer for Hemdale. He was really kind of becoming a force to be reckoned with in the underground, and he was he had this really big distro that was kind of taking a bite out of Relapse's uh, direct mail order sales. I mean, oh. it's you know this is all sounds very archaic now, but in the nineties, like a big thing, Relapse, their whole focus was. Uh, direct mail order sales to customers, whereas Century Media's focus was wholesale to record stores. And so Relapse had this massive distro and catalog with every fucking obscure seven inch in the world or whatever. And what Craig's Craig's business model was very similar to Relapse. And he had just signed Nile and Incantation had just gone off of Relapse and he signed Incantation and put out uh I forget what the EP is, Forsaken Morning of Angelic Anguish or something. Anyway, and so his label was really growing, and he had, you know, we did the, it was just a handshake deal for the split, and he was like, I want to do the full length record, and we're like, cool, we're going to do a record, and as his business sort of continued to grow, and we didn't really have, like, he wasn't professional enough to be like, hey guys, get in the studio at X time so we can make X release date, we were just, and we weren't professional enough to know that that was a thing you should do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We were just sort of writing songs and talking about this album, you know, as a kind of just vague concept. And then the, his business got too big, and Relapse was like, well, uh, how about we sign Hemdale, and oh, we wow. buy your whole distro, and then we'll have the option to buy these con- these contracts. We never sign a contract. Anyway, so it was, I felt really bad for John from Incantation because they'd worked really hard to get off Relapse. And, and then back Relapse on bought the company that they signed. Anyway, so he ended up <laughs> back on Relapse. Uh, and they've since returned again, so I guess it wasn't that bad. Uh, and that's how Relapse got Nile, and that's how they got us as well. Um, and they just had an oh. option whether they wanted to sign us or not. Like Scattered Remnants was another band that was in there. And they had opted not to exercise the, the option on. They didn't. That's a, well, they didn't have like an option for us. They, I think they they approached us separately because the, our label had just disappeared. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, but but that yeah, was, they, that was they, sort of how the approach worked. Right. And thankfully, Matt Jacobson, who owned Relapse, his roommate was a guy named Tom Haley that did a radio show called oh, yeah. Chainsaw Rock in Raleigh, North Carolina, and he loved Exhumed, and he worked at Relapse. So it was like cool. The owner of the label's roommate loves our band. And you just got the option to sign us from this other thing. I was like, okay, cool. So we kind of snuck in that way. <laughs> we were not like courted with like you know. It was definitely wasn't courted. Like, well, like yeah, it was the, definitely the literally like, didn't like, show up. Finally got <laughs> finally got a thing to say. We well, we'll uh, give you a contract, we guess, because what what the hell are you gonna do? You're all right. You'll probably sell a few records. Like, I mean, the, we're like, yes, please, please. Of course, they clearly <laughs> did not really have a lot of faith in the marketability of the record because yeah. they gave us eighteen hundred bucks to record the first album, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> which even in nineteen ninety eight is like jack shit. But I think we were so like, good. wow, golly gee, Willie. So, oh <laughs> so you definitely well, went over budget. Crazy. Oh, no, no, we did really? not. Really. That's why there was we recorded three more songs to the record that were and, never and, mixed and were lost. And we And that's why it sounds how it sounds. And that's why it sounds how it sounds. We <laughs> oh, just literally ran enough. out of time. It was like, well, this is it, guys. <laughs> but what was what was like the writing process like? I said it was a lot of it was random because like yeah we were just we'd be like oh some like our friend offered us a split seven inch so I guess we're using these two songs we were working on for this split seven inch and then we'd have like another couple more so it was never like it was never a, it was a, it was a concept that we were go- we were definitely going to have an album at some point mm-hmm. but it was never like. Now this song's definitely for the record. It was more like we're just making a bunch of fuck. Like, uh, yeah, we had yeah, like these three songs that never even made the record. Library, so it was yeah. never like it was I, never like um, super focused. It was just like okay, well these are the ones that we recorded. They sound decent enough, and that's the ones going to the record. We'll get these other ones later. It was also like we really, um, you know, at the time for a lot of that, it was just Ross and Cole and myself. Leon with uh, Del Muerte, who later went on to play in Impaled and. Uh, Nails and a million other bands. He <laughs> kind of left in like '97, and then we. I think the three of us all had very different ideas about what yeah. the record was going to be. Ross was like, "It's a CD. We can put 70 minutes of music on it. We should put as much as possible." And I was like, 
my thing was like we should be using the you know, eight to ten best songs, and Cole's like, but they, we've already recorded those songs. We'll never use those again. Mm-hmm. And so it was a very contentious sort of process that was not, we were not on the same page at all. It was and then, deeply unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Time. It was the worst recording yeah. experience I had <laughs> in the entire time I've been recording records. But uh, it, we, Mike came in later. He, yeah, Mike, we, we did a European tour with Hemdale. We'd never played outside of California, and so we figured so we go we'll, right go, to we'll go to Europe for 10 days. <laughs> oh, perfect. And um, I think... By the way, with, with zero merch, uh, I better. highly this recommend... This is Mike Beams on guitar, by the way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mike, Mike Beams, Beams yes, on guitar. Not Mike Hamilton. Yeah. You came much later when we were <clears throat> not quite as dim-witted. <laughs> yeah, no, we still are. <laughs> was, was there a... You talk about not a good experience and... Uh, and obviously, like the production quality is. What, are you talking about creative tension, or is oh, it like yes. oh, lots cre- of tension, lots of tension, uh, hard time in the studio too? Like it was just um, some of the. It was it, an interesting working experience working with some of the people on that. Yeah, and we'll drop leave it at there. I mean, <laughs> the, the thing is that like. even though at that point we'd technically been a band for like seven years, um, we were staunchly devoted to being unprofessional. Like, I mean, that was like our thing. We're like, I don't care about you know, like metronomes or this or that. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I don't even think I, that I owned a tuner when we recorded oh, the first album. <laughs> uh, so um, that was sort of our whole thing. We're like, okay, there's all these other bands that are trying to be all pro, and it's like we're we going. Where our you, we're our thing was attitude. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And so all of a sudden, we're kind of thrust into the situation where. It would have really helped to sort of have our shit together. Yeah. And we're like, but yeah, but not having our shit together, that's our thing, man. It's about feeling. <laughs> right. And <laughs> so we sort of discovered pretty quickly that um, that was not enough. Because we do these recording sessions, you know, in, throughout the 90s. Some of them would go really well. And then the next time we'd go back and it would go terribly. It's like, well, mm-hmm. because I mean, you're not tough. preparing consistently and you're not. Like, like and the record, the record, it, like a lot of stuff thing. on the floor. I mean, we'd end up at some guy's like weird studio that only ran from like midnight till eight a.m. and just like, all right, well, let's go turn out a seven inch today. Well, yeah, those those are the bucks. after hours sessions. Yeah, that you yeah the after discount. hours. <laughs> Who knows what he was on e- either? But, um, they were cheaper. So that's how we went in the gore metal. So yeah, it wasn't like this focused experience. It was just more like, okay, well, these are a group of songs. And we're going to record everything we can in this short amount of time on this tiny little budget. And then some stuff got lost. But we were like, all right, well, this is a record. These are songs that can kind of go together. And I, well, it, it, was it was a bit little, messy. It was weird, too, because I don't think anybody in in the band thought, well, Mike Beams, because he's relentlessly positive and upbeat. And he had just joined. And he's like, I'm in a band that's signed. And we made a record. But I think the three of us all thought the record stunk. Yeah. It was like, this shit <laughs> stinks, for, man. I think we just all thought it stunk for different reasons. Right. <laughs> but we were all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so yeah, bizarre, right. man. Because as, like, an outsider, you know, like, as this... That's how like it's. I always say like like this the same where like I don't know what my band sounds like. Right. It's funny like but so me like uh, t- 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 talking about gore metal and exhumed. That record sounds exactly the way I wanted to sound as a fan, it, it, and the songs are great. And I'm pretty sure your experience is very different. Than to be that. honest, it probably <laughs> does sound exactly like what it sounds like. Is, it's is, so good, is, man. Uh, <laughs> it's, so, it's so fucking sick. A group sick. of jackasses just going for it, and you know we just we there's a certain alert to involved. that though. Exactly, yeah. it, ha- it is what it is. It is what it should be. It's and like it, listening to like the early Sepultura shit, where it's like, "Oh, you kids, right?" Yeah, but it's fucking killer. You know, like yeah. they're writing so some shit. shit that you know forms what becomes you know heavier thrash and death metal sure. later. Even you know, I have no, I have a fondness for it. I, for I sure. think <clears throat> I, I hated it for a long time, um, and then I think once Ross and I sort of because. For many years, we had a very acrimonious relationship, and now... Yeah, I mean, Ross left. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, Ross, no, was, no. Ross was asked to leave. <laughs> oh, Ross was told yes. to leave. Yes, told um, to leave. That, that, <laughs> damn. That's, that, that's, that was <laughs> a, beefy, dude. That, that's beefy, there's, there's dude. A whole, yeah, there, was a whole, there was a whole set of uh, uh, attacks back and forth, and it was like, oh, well, by the way, this is our band, <clears> so you can actually go. I'm right. Like, All right, well, good. Fuck you, and I'm out. Did you <laughs> then, then, I had other projects, and so I was... But yeah, it was... And then we had, yeah, a real bad relationship, and then we... He... And we kind of patched things up to be at least friendly with each other. Right. And then it's, Matt asked me, he said, we're doing this re-recording. And it was kind of interesting to revisit all that material with that kind of hindsight and having re- 
like kind of started rebuilding the friendship that we had years before. And so, yeah, now I have a much greater fondness for that original recording than I used to have, for I, sure. I think that's the thing for me. It was, it was just so, the experience was so negative, and I had these really good friends, you, you know, and Ross and Cole, and we weren't getting along. We all sort of, like, kind of, we were all frenemies and shit, and so that was how mm -hmm. I remember the record. Now when I hear it, I'm like, oh, this is kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love records that sound like shit. Like, I'm totally into, like, Welcome to Hell and out, uh, In the Sun of Evil and Recaputrefaction and all mm -hmm. these records that are technically quite bad. And so like, now I can, I can hear the record. I'd be like, oh, this, is, no, this, then, is, this is pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. But this is the kind of bad that I could see myself liking if I wasn't in a band. And well, I'm it's like, just oh, like that old-school cult yeah. sound. It was just yeah. like... As a listener, you like really had to do your due diligence to like what the hell are they actually? What the playing? fuck is going on? I love that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. your imagination they, fills it in in a totally. way that's like oh, really yeah. kind of special. Trying to figure yeah. out what they're actually playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's how you end up writing your own riffs. Like I remember one time I was trying to write, uh, I was trying to learn how to play the intro for "Over the Wall" from Testament, and I did this thing that I thought was the harmony part that they do, the dun -dun 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 kind of thing, and I was like, this isn't it at all. Well, I guess I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the that's, that's the, system the right essence there. of that's it. You know, sick. you try yeah. to rip something off, but you do it so wrong that it ends up being original. Yeah, it ends up being exact. <laughs> <laughs> like, just take a pestilence riff, play it like you know backwards or something, and upside then down and incorrect, and then yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so Ross, for for you, I'm sure it was such a different experience going from that time period in your life to like impaled, where I'm sure that was way more like impossible. Positive, uh, yeah, it, yeah. From that, and then like, yeah, no, actually, it, it paled. It's, I mean, you know, we all, we, we, Matt, I've gone over this a million times with each other when we started uh, talking about playing together again. But like uh, that, I mean, it was a good learning experience to get like, kicked, kicked out of a band, get in this other one. Um, and I was friends with people in, the, in that band, but not quite as tight as I'd been with Cole and and uh, Matt. And so, yeah, making those kinds of forging new friendships and learning he how to interact to with again. other people mm -hmm. and just the working i mean that band was also a sloppy mess when it started out too but it got better <laughs> but it was it was a it was a pretty positive experience and then of course there's all that we kicked leon out at one point but now leon's back and impaled i mean it's like kind of like this weird <laughs> leon's been leon's fired there. and rehired yeah from me and Sick. ross's band yeah, like been, so many times i've been playing you know like i wasn't super tight with uh sean from impale when when leon asked me to join impale but like we've now been playing music together for like uh 25 years non-stop in a couple projects together impaled and some other stuff and so yeah it was a really positive experience and it, and it helped me grow as a person uh, going through that and then forging new bonds and then it was uh finally uh was able to let go of a lot of shit and when matt came back to me and was like you want to do this i understand if you'd say no i was like no you know i always said as a shit kid that i would never go back but i was like yeah let's go do that re-recording hey do you want to fill in for these shows and then I was like, well, yeah, I want to play with Napalm Death and Boy about that pool. Just wooing him back. <laughs> and, you know, back. Yeah. What else is really cool is like as a fan before joining the band and shit, you know, like there's two. Like it it was, you know, Ross is an exhumed first and then he splits off and does the impaled thing. Mm -hmm. There were two bands to love that were very similar. <laughs> oh yeah. And, oh yeah. And so like there's just more for me to listen to. <laughs> in, always, in like a very selfish kind of manner, but like, you know. It sucks that it was as a, a tumultuous as a gore-filled yeah. bounty for all. Right? Yeah, exactly. Everyone wins. And look at us. Here we are. Who to thunk? Who to thunk it? Not me. <laughs> Together again for the first time. <laughs> and so and then you put out Slaughter Cult and then your third record and then it seems like you kind of had like a burnout and the, yeah. basically you had like a five years to kind of reap. Did you step away from like the death penalty scene and, and as like a whole or, or what? Um, I was playing in Repulsion at that time, okay. um, which is like my favorite death metal and or grindcore band where whatever you want to put them it's like metallica and yeah, no big deal. like my favorite band <laughs> um yeah. so i was kind of scratching the itch that way you know mm -hmm. um and it was very cool playing in repulsion because i sort of got to experience being in a band as just the guitar player and yeah. i was like this is really fucking fun you know and i was yeah. just playing songs i loved and we got a lot of great gigs because it's repulsion it's like yeah. hey you guys want to do like a week doing direct support for at the gates like sure why not just play the same <laughs> 18 <Wow>. songs you <laughs> got um and <clears throat> it was also really cool because uh you know matt and scott are i don't know like seven or eight years older than me and as someone like that's intensely interested in the sort of early, you know, 
mid eighties kind of formative era of death metal, just sort of listening to them and talking to them and picking their brains about the the genre and their experiences. Um, I, I was really it was really beneficial. Um, and I always, I, you know, I played in a couple thrash bands and stuff. And uh, it just really, the, the band kind of dissolved because Cole, the original drummer, he graduated from college and he's like, I want to pursue a career. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, okay, well, I was kind of anticipating that, but we really couldn't find a suitable drummer, you know? Like, it just wasn't, we played with, like, John from Origin, who was like, it was like... Right. It was just kind of like using, you, you need like a 22 and you got like a AR-15. It's like, this is a bit much. Um, and I saw John with that skinless and I was not stoked. Right. But John, you know, it's also where John was at the time and he'll be the first to say it. So I don't feel bad. I, I love mm-hmm. John and um, yeah, we're, we're, we're friends to this day. <laughs> Great dude. But he, at the time, you know, he was supposed to be the extreme metal future drummer he was, guy. Yeah. He was. And it was like, he was more focused on becoming that person than like mm-hmm. playing in a band and playing to the song or whatever mm-hmm. and especially i think when he left origin i'm not sure exactly what the circumstances were he had a lot to prove and you know he played like somebody with too much to prove and it was like dude the beat's just too and he's like it's like whoa dude you know i can't even stay on time with this um and we play with the time anyway if that's true <laughs> but i like to blame john it's john's fault <laughs> oh yeah, yeah let's play acdc song real quick dude <laughs> yeah. that's always the challenge with a lot of these extreme drummers it's like can you play hell's bells and a lot of them are just like oh yeah it's easy and they like get 12 like the most stiff and they just can't ass beat. It. um and so we just didn't really find a lineup that stuck and when Cole left, then Bud, our old bass player, later guitar player, he was like, oh, this is a good time for me to leave. And I was like, shit. So then it was me and Mike Beams. And, you know, we were trying to support the third record, and we did all these shows, we did all these tours. And we got back and started working on this, like, covers thing because we're trying to break in this new drummer. And halfway through that, then Beams is like, yeah, I'm burnt out. Like, I, w- I want to stop. And I was like, damn. I already took the fucking advance. Like, I'm trying to make this record. Like, why? You should have said that when, right when we got home, and then the band would have just split up, and it would have been clean. And mm-hmm. I was kind of stuck, and we finished it, and we did... I was like, well, we'll do a tour. We'll see how it goes. And it was like, nah, the chemistry is just not there. Damn. And uh, I was like, you know, that was... that. It was it was time to, to, start, to take Wait, a step so back. Wait, so before you split, who replaced Mike on guitar? Uh, Wes, who played on August and Oh, no show. Sure. Never yeah, actually I played a show with you on that lineup on that tour. It wasn't, the chemistry was not there. No, <laughs> it was no, it was not. not. Good. Yeah. Um, Gotta have chemistry. This is Anatomy, uh, Anatomy is Destiny. Anatomy. Uh, this yeah, is Pilot's the, the Covers, the covers yeah. record. Oh, okay. Garbage Days. Where yeah, you yeah. Where Wes and I had a good, like, guitar relationship, but the rest of the band just wasn't really there, and I was like, all right. Um, so, yeah, we took a break for, like, five and a half years And then you went surfing. Yeah, you learned to surf, kind of a little bit. <laughs> so I was more into like scuba diving and snorkeling, but hey. sick. Because <laughs> yeah, you moved to Hawaii for a while. Yeah, I lived in Hawaii for like uh, a year and a half, and um, it was one of those stupid moves that you're like with this chick, and you're like, oh, this is gonna save our relationship. Oh, of course. But then I was like, she laughed, and I was like, well, Hawaii's pretty sick, so I'm just gonna hang out for like yeah, another yeah, six months. Yeah, yeah. And um, oh, brutal. And then yeah, then we. Then the band sort of came back together, and you know, uh, 10, 11 years later, here we are. <laughs> yeah, and then, and and Mike, you've been playing for Deeds of Flesh since ninety nine. Yeah, ninety nine. Uh, how did uh, how did you get uh, hooked up with uh, Zoom? Well, in the Bay Area, back say mid like ninety four, ninety five, I was in the band Vile, <clears throat> and so we played shows together. That's how we knew each other. Yeah, right. We're all Bay Area kids, mid-life. and so we all yeah. would see each other at the same shows. I like the Omni and the Stone and all that, and then you know the One Step Beyond and all all the different shows that happened in the Bay Area, and we started playing shows together with Vile and Exhumed. We played like a couple festivals and then Paradise Lounge. Um, so we knew each other <laughs> from just playing a few shows, and then uh, Vile and Deeds did a tour, and then Deeds was having issues with their drummer, and they asked me to to join the band just to do a tour. So I started going down to San Luis Obispo and learning the material. And I was like, this is actually really interesting and very, like, pushing my boundaries as far as, you know, a drummer. So I was, like, more interested in that than Vile. And Vile was kind of dissolving at that time because most of the guys, uh, Juan, the, the vocalist, just wanted to just do studio. Uh, the other guitar player was married and moved up to Reno, so he was 
and we didn't have a bass player, so it just kind of started dissolving from there. So moved down there and played with Deeds for yeah twenty years, and then in two thousand eleven, I think Matt. I mean, Matt has a brother that works in the local bar, the, the Irish bar. Yeah, and I, I would kind of keep tabs on Matt, like, <laughs> hey, what's Matt up to? What's he, you know, what's he doing? Sick. He's like, yeah, he's going to actually move to the Central Coast. And I'm like, oh, sick. So I'm thinking in my mind, this is a cool opportunity just to jam with somebody that I know <laughs> and just, you right. know, and never thought about joining Exum. But then Deeds was inactive, you know, for like five years. Mm -hmm. And Eric was very focused on the label and mm -hmm. he didn't really want to tour. So it's just kind of like, here's my opportunity to just jam with somebody that knows how to play death metal that's on the Central Coast, which not a lot of musicians on the Central Coast. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's yeah. a very small it's town. Little, it's a little island, island you know? Town, yeah, dude, yeah, so then he, he moved, and we started hanging out and jamming, and then we're just playing covers, and then from there, he's like, well, I just put a new record out, and I have no drummer to, su you know, to support on tour. He goes, why don't you just learn the songs and just go on tour? And I was like, all right. So it kind of just fell in my lap, really. Yeah. It's kind of... Well, we when we did the comeback record, we kind of... It was sort of like a we'll see what happens sort of thing. Like mm -hmm. we put like Maryland and a couple other things, and you know we knew that the lineup was temporary, the recording lineup, and it was going to be myself and Wes, the guitar player, that were, you know, more permanent. But we just didn't know. It was like you know we'll see what it, we'll do a couple shows, and then if there's interest or whatever, then we'll maybe look at doing it further, and then. You know, we just kept getting good offers. <laughs> so like, well, yeah, you're like, yeah, you want to yeah. go out and like, do well, a direct Maryland support for Death Campbell? Fest. Like, yeah, yeah, of course that was we great. did. You did a <laughs> Maryland Death Fest with the right. recording lineup, and then after that, Danny was busy with Intronaut. So right, and like, he was yeah, he was never going to be like a yeah. Full -time you're guy like, anyway, we'll just learn so the songs and let's just do it. So yeah. I was like, all right, this is killer because my <clears throat> my roots are in thrash basically, and then you know, technical death metal after that, obviously. So it, for me, it was just kind of like this is. It's fun to play, and it's also like right where I started, like you know, playing like thrash, which is thrash and grind. So, well, but, it's, yeah, but it's fun and interesting. That's the thing, you know. So it, yeah. was, it was a different kind of a totally different vibe. But I was after jamming with her for a little bit. I was like, all right, this is killer. It's like it feels like where I should be. Great. You know. It sounds like like a hard transition because yeah, I mean that style, like the style is so different. It's totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's Mike is a he's a bit of a wonderkin. He's one of those technical drummers who can do all that stuff, but then also can rock. Just play, for yeah, just play, rock. just play. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's totally. really, and it's part of it is musical, but most of it I think is just attitude. You know, it's like it is. You know, being in a band, uh, it becomes about playing for the song. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you're there like, I got to showcase all these cool techniques that I can do. <clears throat> if the song's not built for that, then it's going to be overkill. And, like, we're very fortunate that Mike is just like, yeah, this is what the song demands. Well, that was very important yeah. to me because I know, you know, I, I you mentioned, like, Longstreth playing with Skinless. And I, I saw one of those shows. And I was just like, I never understood why a drummer would just come in and completely try to change the formula of what that band is mm -hmm. by trying to showcase what they can do. John, just, if you listen, we love you, buddy. No, it's not about John. It's just about, like, I want... Mm -hmm. To me, it was important to play what the material was recorded, mm -hmm. <laughs> or as close to as I can, but also yeah. having my style. And I was like, it was I was good friends with Cole, and he was like, you know, friends with Matt. And I was like, I wanted to keep it true to what I don't yeah. want to come in and just change the sound of the band by throwing a bunch of extra, you know, shit in it. Plug I want, why put the extra work into it? I mean, it's just <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> well, it was, it was easy like, thrash. It was shit. actually really fun. funny though because when funny. I first started jamming with Mike, he's like, well. You know, is this Phil like the one that they, the, the one that's on the record? I was like, I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> <laughs> it goes at the end of measure four into the next riff. It just yeah. do, do, do whatever. It's a fucking drum roll. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, people are going to care. I was like, no, no, no. Was that You're not drum, in Deeds yeah. anymore. No one's going to care. <laughs> it's the yeah. exact same. That but drum I mean, roll man never same. been played the same time by the other <laughs> right. drummer. Like, yeah. uh, Probably but, just made it I mean, coming from a yeah. you know a musician point of view, like going right. to shows, and I've seen you know I've seen all these touring bands that we've watched growing up, and they introduce a new player and they do something different, like you know, because I'm a purist, like motherfucker, that's not on the album. What are you doing? That's not how the song <laughs> is played. Oh, yeah. So it was important to me to play the material that was the way it was recorded, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. just to for the respect of the band and the fan listening. You know yeah. what I mean? So they're like, okay, this guy's coming in. He's not changing. He's just playing. The, you know what's on the record. So that was important to me to keep it true to that. It's great. Yeah, it's hard to have like you want to play the record, but also put your own flavor. Yeah, like that. You're yeah. like your like your bones, your your soul into it. Yeah. Mike's flavor yeah, is yeah. he plays the songs well. <laughs> That's go. the flavor That's he's the brought. Yeah, yeah, if you play this, play the, the song. <laughs> Exactly. I kind of felt like I was like, wow, he's giving this band maybe like more respect than we deserve. <laughs> is, I'm not used to this. This is nice. <laughs> Dude, when you get a sick drummer, it changes the game. It, you I, know, I get to tell really people does. I play in a band with a guy from Deeds of Flesh. Well, <laughs> that's so fucking cool. 
That's that'll, also that'll just never, being a, a young you know. kid who's with my ambition and my, you know, I, my shit to prove, you know? Well, that's, of course. When, when Matt had asked me to, like, start, he was like, hey, what would you think about pajamming with us more and doing this again? And, like, I, part of it was I was like, well, I toured with because I impaled and uh, Deeds of Flesh had toured Europe. And I was like, and I knew Mike from Back in the Barrier. I'm like, that guy's really nice. And we had so much fun on that tour. I'm like, all right, I'll make a new friend. And, like, that's <laughs> it. That was, like, but it's been, like, a total strange person I don't know if I would have been as interested but I was like I really liked Mike as a friend anyway so yeah, yeah we had a fun time on that so tour it was good to, yeah but it was you are you're you're good to tour with and it so it is it becomes a good unit of friends so that's right. what I was really happy circling to, back to that of so course, I was happy to that's join the back chemistry in of it. Yeah. yeah I was like I like all these people that are pl- that are jamming with Matt and Exhumed right now so yeah I'll do that that'll be fun yeah I felt right the vibe was good yeah, yeah, good yeah vibe, absolutely for sure. It's like, I'll remarry you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Uh, I'm totally. start, I know our, you've been hurt before, but I swear I've changed. Man. Restart, <laughs> oh restart our polycule. <laughs> well, Matt grew up and changed. Proud of you, man. It's hey, good. you know, I mean. It's badass. It, it is it takes, actually it, it kind of nice. It's a lot. Like, jamming with, with Ross and, and sort of repairing that friendship. Uh, for me, that's like, it's a, it's a little bit of reassurance. Like, okay, you did grow as a person. Like, like I'm still basically this, the same guy, but I'm just not a dick. It's like, <laughs> all right, cool. When you're young, <laughs> so, you have all that angst, yeah. and you have your vision, and nobody's going to steer your vision. Well, you're, and that's the hard part. Yeah. When you're trying to. Yeah. You're creative. You're young, and you got all this angst, and you just want to just create. You just want to put your stamp on shit. And it's also and like, you're trying to collaborate with other people yeah. that are like minded. It's like it's hard to make progress doing it's a that. Bunch of chiefs. Oh, and yeah. yeah. I mean, I like yeah. Totally. It definitely feels like we've grown up because it's like yeah, we're just working together now. It's like there's still all that same fun that was back there in like high school and into the college, but just we don't fight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that. Well, and I think the thing yeah. is too, like with the band being more established, like there's less. It feels like on one hand there's less at stake because it's like, hey, you know, we're gonna be able to go out and tour and do the things that we want to do. So you have. It's not that there's less at stake because honestly, with the you know we need the money that we make and all that shit. But it's it's less in question. It's less internal pressure yeah. because you're not like, oh my god, we got it. This is our first record. We got to do good. We got to right. do this. Yeah. It's an existential moment. Everything you're doing. Yep. Whereas now it's like, hey, we just did our eighth album and we're still going out on tour and people are still turning up to the gigs. So it's like it's a big deal. Yeah, it's like right on. So we can have fun with this and we can afford to just. You know, we can afford to 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 take on that feedback. Like, this is not a good idea. Don't do that. And it's like, okay, yeah. cool. Well, we won't. Great. We'll do something. We've had else. a lot of time to express ourselves <laughs> and all the other records and stuff that we've done. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of less pressure. Like, okay, well, oh, that's not. You don't think that's working? Fine. I'll ditch it. I don't give a fuck. That's right. Fine. Yeah, you won't have a full-on fight over like a fucking harmonic or something. That yeah. solo. <laughs> that, the last three notes in that solo offend my very being. Yeah. I mean, totally. like, you did ask me to nix some uh, dive bombs on time. I didn't. No, that was <laughs> this gentleman. <That's> me. <laughs> they were so good. <laughs> it's all. It's okay. It's funny because yeah. I almost quit the band over it. Like, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Those dive bombs are my soul. This is my heart. <laughs> Come no, on. No, the, the other day, there's certain uh, hills to die on. That one is not the no, one to no, die no, on. No. Come the, on. The picture, <laughs> like we got in an <laughs> argument about something, and then later on that night, we're just like, okay, so this is a thing, and whatever. People hugged, and it was over. And the vitriol guys, um, you know, they're a very angry band, but the whole band is, the whole thing is just all angst. And like, so did you guys ever like, like get in fist fights? And I was like, oh, dude, like I shoved our old drummer down the stairs. I threw, <laughs> I threw a fire extinguisher at him. Oh, he my threw goodness. a cymbal stand at Ross. Like we went to a show and like jumped yeah. Ross one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, uh, I got a push. I went back up and then I said, fuck you. And he said, fuck you. And then it just all ended up in a big brawl. Yeah, that was, I that was, was like, damn. I was that like, was like the out of the band. Yeah. And I was on the other side of the room. But we fought on the streets and yeah. me and Cole like wrestled on the streets of New York one time, <laughs> like the first time there. And it was because I, yeah, I said something and I was like, I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. He's lending us pedals. And he's like, us. And was, that was it. That was that enough, was that was enough to start a fight yeah. because yeah. I said us instead of like you. It yeah. Was, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't miss that at all. <laughs> that sounds, For our friends, yeah. I'm in front of that sure guy. You sure don't want to spice it up? That guy no, was, we're doing pretty spicy. good with the adulting now. We talk about our feelings and we just uh, get it all out yeah, there and I say, that, okay, this is what I meant to say. This is what, yeah. I, what I meant by this saying this. This is what we should have yeah. not yeah. said. Sorry, brother. It's hard to learn that. It's beautiful. Beautiful. That's it's, how you have to do it because you know we, we can't be have that tension on the road and yeah, that, that affects no. your live show and 
Yep. You know, you can tell the energy of a band if they're friends or not by just how they interact on yeah, stage. One hundred percent. And you can tell like this stage. band is not like each other, or this band, these guys are fucking having fun and they oh, like yeah. each I mean, other. It's mu- obvious. Musicians so, have yeah. an arrested development, anyways. I think, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it's and then you know, there's uh, you know, society's like you're supposed to bury your feelings or whatever because you're a big old tough dude and whatever. So it's like, yeah, we'll get in a fight, tough. but then it's like, all right, hey, step aside, let's go have a talk. We're gonna have a hug. Yeah, I like to start them with hugs. Yeah, it's a good way. It's a good way to really disarm any kind of machismo. It's like totally a hug, a good, a good hug. Bring it a in. Good yeah. hug. Totally. Now we can talk. Also, you know, like I'm 47, man, and if I fall down the stairs in a shoving match, I could really, I could really hurt myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's over. You're showing, you're showing <laughs> that's that's it. It. It's, it's a tour going So it's a practical. Side yeah, friends. To it I mean, it's like even with that uh, cold, though, Jordan was like getting fights with him. He lives by my parents now. He comes over and says hi. I've had a play date with his daughter and my nephew together. Like wow. it's all, Aww. all that. All that stuff is temporary. Yeah. Any kind of stuff like that you think is going to really just end your life and just you're going to be destroyed by horrible feelings. So it's, those times are temporary. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, like uh, like your feelings for someone will just oh, – it's, yeah, it's, it's, ar- it's just a fucking argument. It's going it's it's to pass. Yeah, totally. right. It's going to pass. Yeah. Can't hang on to that shit. It'll, you can't, It'll dude, eat you no. from the inside. Totally. I, I learned a lot from uh, about just letting things go and just forgiving. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like my wow, it's like a, it's like a, it feels like a weight lifted. It really it's, is. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, oh damn, I feel like a, a new person. Yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. important also to have to voice that, to just talk about it. Because if you just mm-hmm. hold it, it's like that's how it's, it's there. It's just there. Yeah, and it just builds and just grows. And if you don't fucking talk about it, then oh, by the end of the tour, you're just like, that you know, fuck that guy. And you start yeah. doing a bunch of other like <laughs> passive aggressive yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's totally. Never do shit that you regret. Like you know, you just. It just it's not know, health. It's not healthy living like no. that. So you, you just gotta, realize that being in a rock band is just like being in any other sort of long term interpersonal dynamic, you know. And maybe that's not like cool or glamorous to say. It's not just about like fucking blowing lines and like picking up chicks or whatever. Um, Which is a myth, by the way. Hey, I fucking <laughs> I, st- I still do coke. Fuck you, man. Oh my goodness. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> I do lines of chicks. I'm not quitting. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm mean, no quitter. <laughs> My mom didn't raise no quitters. But, but you realize that, like, in the long term, like, most of your time is not that. Right. And, like, most of your time is just existing with other people. Totally. And yes. you got to fucking find a way to do that, or you won't get to play music. And that, that was the whole thing. That's why you started doing this shit. It's because you wanted to fucking get out and play rock music in front of people. And. You know, get, be heard. Like, have your shit out there. And if you can't do that if you're sitting around making everybody's life difficult or totally. letting everybody else make your life difficult. You got to find a way to, to just you know, be fucking humans, man. So yeah, deep thought of the day. So, anyways, our new record's about a bunch of gory shit and people right. dying and <laughs> fucking corpses talk about and some eating positive, dead bodies. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. smoking the wrong shit, <laughs> smoking human remains and melting your brain and all I could stuff. Dude, people are jamming their record. I go on Spotify and boom, there it is. Yeah, awesome. Nice. That's, that's cool. Good to hear. And, that's a good and, response for and sure. After, it was a fun one to make. <laughs> there you go. It, it sounds awesome, and uh, yeah, people are stoked, and uh, it has a, a more uh, you know, has a combination of you guys, but still like a modern sound, which is hard hard to do. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's badass. It's uh, I mean, I mean, I think the challenge really like the way that I look at it is like this is our. That was our eighth album. That's a lot, man. Because when I think about my favorite bands, I'm like, well, I love the first four, and then like the others are okay, or sure. so, and this and that. And you're just trying to like, trying to create something that needs to be there. Like, you know what I mean? After all this yeah. time, after doing this, and really, you know, not changing our style too much. It's like, how do you find? You got to create something that needs to be there, or else you're just sort of like treading water. And that's, I don't know if we succeed, but that's the goal every time. So you know, we're lucky enough to keep, you know. Well, the story behind this record was it was a, supposed to be an anniversary record. Is that correct? What I mean, was that the, was part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and that's why we brought in like the uh, ex members to write songs was because originally this was going to be on the 30th anniversary yeah. of Exhum. I mean, it was existing. Well, that was in the middle of the pandemic. So, yeah, Relapse was like, we're not putting out this record around this time. And it also was like, we wouldn't be able to do like an yeah, anniversary tours, show or whatever. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I bring that up because I want to just let, let everybody know how it came to be and yeah, how the, yeah, yeah, the former members like contributed to this record. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's great. Which was really yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, we had four. Yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike Beams, Matt Weiner, Bud Burke. And uh, you're, you're, like, you're like, is this like, I'm gonna throw an idea at you, I don't think you're gonna like it. And I was like, I fucking love that idea, <laughs> like, that's so cool. And, like, I really like the, the all the material that they brought to the record, and it was like really fun to, to people. I'm having jammed with them 
a long time ago and then getting to play their material again, like, wow. you know, but new and for, and it was fun for them, I think, to like kind of, I remember Leon saying something about like, well, what, he's like, and now I've got to mode in for like what I would write for Exhumed right. as opposed to what I'd be writing for another project. And yeah. that, like revisiting that's like kind of fun and, you know, some nostalgia for different times that people had spent together on in the band. And it was really cool to jam all that stuff. I think it also kind of plays into the whole like what also we're, we're out of ideas. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've been out of true. ideas for decades, but no, I think it plays into what we're talking about about like you know so much of being in a band is about those relationships, yeah. Yeah. and like we kind of look at it as like the overwhelming majority of people that have played with the band are still like good friends of ours, you know. And it's like an extended family kind of vibe, and there's no problem like bringing those people back in and. You know, it's also about getting over that that ego and just be like, "Hey, yeah. let's see what this guy can bring to the table." Like, cool, man. I'm like, you heard, you heard millions of my riffs for fucking years. Let's try somebody else's. Like, fuck it. And um, so I think it's just a, it's a, it's it's a, you know, it's a very celebratory record. Even I don't, the, I don't, I don't the know. Bass wrote, wrote a song too. Like, yeah, she wrote, wrote a song. song. Yeah. Sebastian wrote a yeah. song. Great. Um, so it's like a past and present extended family like team. It's a cheers. That's great. Yeah. It's a big yeah. cheers to the right. dead. That's something to celebrate. You know, yeah. still still up putting out your eighth record, people are jamming it even more than ever, and then people are still coming out to the shows, being still able to do this. Yeah. yeah. After like, you know, the like like the years of doing it, the grind like going through the dark years of a, a <laughs> genre. Yeah. Like yeah. that's right. a it's, it's very it's, it's very uh I'm impressed. I know you guys got to take off at two. It is two o'clock right now, but okay. I just, just want to close off real, real quick. Uh, I've been a, a fan of Exhumed since I was a kid. Oh, so uh, I remember it was a previous uh, bass player puked on me. Um, so, <laughs> that's a real. Have you been puked on? You're a real fan. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. I was like, I was like, why? Why is everyone not going to the front of the stage? So this is this is that showcase theater. That's my home venue. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I live like two, I, I live two miles away from from there. Okay, yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna see Zoom. Cool. I'm like, everyone was like backing up. I'm like, what what's the problem? And then sure enough, oh, <laughs> badass. Yeah. And then I, uh, so I mean, Exhumed has inspired. Uh, Suicide Silence, uh, Deeds of Flesh uh, has inspired Suicide Silence. I mean, Impaled was, was a big band. I remember playing Showcase, our first few shows, wearing the like the uh, Impaled shirt. Uh, hell yeah. I mean, dude, mad, mad, uh, mad respect. You know, we, uh, awesome. like the deathcore scene wouldn't exist without you guys at all. Oh, at all. That's awesome. So, uh, that's cool, man. And uh, I have also another pleasant memory of uh, Impaled played Chain Reaction. And did you breathe fire that fucking show? Yeah. Okay. Like, again, <laughs> yeah. Like, why is everyone not going in front of stage? I might, like, just, oh, literally over my fucking head. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. like, <laughs> with badass, know, they won't let us breathe fire. So we're kind of restricted as well. <laughs> well, we'll if see. We, we'll if see we see have long, an outdoor fest, we'll, we'll see how long yeah, that's on. Long, but we'll we want to bring that back. Yeah. yeah. That would bring be, more that elements was, of the That was a lot of fun spraying hot oil on the first two or three rows of people and having them all wipe their face. What the fuck just happened? You know, it's that same thing. Like, you're. You're like 15, 16. You're like, and what that, the fuck just, is this? Right, it, it's well, crazy. It just, it's just, it, I mean, I'm 37 now, and it's, it's just ingrained in your brain forever. And having a lasting memory is a very rare thing that any artist or band can do. Yeah. So the fact that, that you guys have done that is pretty fucking special. Oh, we, we were kids, kind, we were like, man, it would be yeah. so cool if people did this all the time. Right. We're going to do this dipshit stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's fun. It's, 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 it's always nice to hear that people have like memories like that from some show Plus and memories. like to like hit someone personally in a way where it's you know we're playing for a crowd but then I hear from someone years later about like oh this this one time this thing happened I'm like oh fuck you're like I, I thought that show that. sucked that so apparently weird. like at least that somebody was, yeah. got it so it was great yeah you know? exactly it's nice to hear it thank you and I mean yeah. I think the way I look at it too is like I think back when I was a kid and getting into this music and sort of how much that meant to me and sort of you know how impactful that was and when people talk to me about you know anything that I've done, sort of being part of that same story. That's like it's it's pretty fucking neat. It's yeah. like wow, okay, cool, man. You know, like that's <clears throat> because I know how much my story means to me personally, and to be part of somebody else's yeah. story is it's like a pretty fucking big deal, man. It's cool. It is. You know, it, thank you. It's why I kind of give you guys shit for like a gore metal. It's like it's funny <laughs> you guys are like, oh, the records sound like shit, but to guys like me, it's just like that stuff. That's <laughs> <laughs> why it's why I, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Right. You know, it's kind of crazy right. to have those like memories and that you know talking to you guys about that kind of. Checks my own e ego. It's like you know, <laughs> oh, this song sounds so sick, but what the fuck do I know? What's what's gonna happen when it leaves that fucking studio? Yeah. You know, it's, it's not yours anymore. <laughs> it's crazy, huh? And that's Absolutely. the beautiful thing about metal is like you know, we have our influences and we've grabbed what they did 
you know, like pestilence and carcass and all them, and then we just did our version of that. And then yeah. just just to see the longevity of death metal, it's never going to go away. It will change well, here no. and there, but you know, it's nice to know that we have our spot in history, and you it's guys crazy. will have your spot in history. And then the bands that look up to you, to right. Suicide Sons, well, they'll take what they learned from you and all the, the bands before that, and just continue this. Just continue, you, yeah, yeah. You, you don't think that you're paying it forward. You're just like, I just want to play my dumbass totally. riffs, but and it's like, oh shit, there's <laughs> like, 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 yeah. like a thing right. to it, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're yeah. all we're all paying it forward, and it's all that's what makes the In genre 2150, so awesome. All the AI robots will be writing they the most will. killer yeah. fucking <laughs> on the wasteland yeah. while they while they crush right. the humans yeah. underneath their feet. Exactly. It's gonna be beautiful. It's like Terminator Two line. Yeah. It's gonna be gorgeous, and they're gonna burn all the books with our names in it. So <laughs> we, won't, we won't even exist in that realm. Robot dicks. Yeah. <laughs> well, where can uh, to, to close it out? Where can people find you guys? What's the, do you have that link tree? What's that thing? That's uh, I mean, we're yeah, we're in all the usual places. You know, Facebook, Instagram, cool. uh, Spotify, Exhumed official, Bandcamp. official Exhumed, whatever. Yeah, we Twitter, decide, whatever we can get you know. on the uh, handle. Um, we're, we're very findable, and we've been on the same label, Relapse Records, for 24 years now. So if you can't find wow. us, you can find them, and that will, you know, <laughs> lead you forward. Um, we also have the Darker Corners, where we have... Right, we have our own web store that we run, and that, print our own shirts and all that yeah. shit. Give so. a name. What's, what's it all it's like? Dar- I think it's like darkercorners.myshopify.com. Okay, right yeah. Now. Got Shop it. Shop Oh, no, actually, you can just go to darkercorners.com, which is the blog, which will lead you to the store, and then you can buy all the things. The th- <laughs> that's your, the that's brutal, your deal. Get the brutal stuffs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully people can find us by, you know, us rolling up to a town relatively near them and just going to a, a show, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we want to see you the most. Right. At, at our shows. Come out, experience the show with us. So, yeah. Fuck yeah. Honored to hang out with you guys. All right, everyone. Yeah. That's so it. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for having us.